1996. The design mandate called for a versatile aircraft that could smoothly move between ground attack and air superiority roles. The F-35 was meant to replace other strike aircraft like the F-15E, F-16, and F-18. It is hoped it will be the world's premier strike aircraft for the next 30 years. The only airplane out there that the F-35 is going to have any trouble with would even be parity with it would be the Raptor. Nobody else would be close. With a single powerful engine, the F-35 tops out at Mach 1.6, but it lacks supercruise and thrust vectoring. Still, it incorporates the same stealth characteristics as the F-22 and can be every bit as lethal in air-to-air -air combat. F-35 is more optimized for both the air-to-air -air and air-to-ground kind of role that it's involved in. A little less maneuverable than an F-22, but certainly comparable to all the fourth-gen aircraft. It is a single-engine fighter, carries about 18,000 pounds of gas on it, so it uh, will be able to fly at very, very significant ranges on a single engine. In a future air war, the F-35 will perform a variety of functions, as opposed to the F-22, which is specialized for air-to-air -air combat. The F-35's airframe is easily and cheaply adapted for many types of missions. Variants are already being built. One is an Air Force mission from fixed base. One is for the Marine Corps version from L-class carriers as well as austere basing. And the third is for the U.S. Navy, which lands on the large CV-class carriers. It's going to be a very, very interesting change to aerial combat when you have stealth fighters deployed from ships where the enemy really doesn't know where they are. So you think about a 600-mile radius based anywhere around the globe that's 70% water really is a game-changing kind of aircraft. The F-35, as well as the F-22, use an incredibly powerful radar called Active Electronically Scanned Array, or AESA radar. AESA is another key technological advantage that Generation 5 aircraft will have in a dogfight of the future. It can stare at a very wide picture and give you a very good sense of what your targets are, both on the air and in the ground. It's a very big improvement over previous radars, which were mechanically scanned, meaning that they had to move back and forth, and they did it much slower, and so the pilot didn't have as clear or as instantaneous as a picture as he would today with um, the newer AESA radar. Looming before the strikers is a formidable electronic fortress. The IADS of the next 10 years will be incredibly lethal. Surface-to-air missiles will carry onboard radar, essentially becoming fire-and-forget weapons, unlike their predecessors, which were controlled from the ground. Radar systems will become smaller and more mobile, making them harder to locate and destroy. So the first wave of an attack would probably involve your very stealthy vehicles. Why would you use these in the first wave? Because stealth, in essence, shrinks the view of the bad guy's air defense system. The search and targeting radars in an IADS create a virtual picket fence. The initial strike force of stealth attackers will slip through the gaps in that fence, positioned to destroy the defenses. One of the things we want to do is create a corridor or a safe entry point and exit point for our strikers to go in and to deliver that desired weapon. One of the ways we'll do that is by taking down the enemy defenses systematically. The F-35s and F-22s pierce the radar net undetected. But as the strike force steals in, another formation of friendly aircraft enters the area. Immediately targeting radars across the IADS switch on. But the formation isn't what it appears to be. 
It's a diversionary force of eight MQ-9 Reapers. Unmanned Combat Aerial Vehicles, or UCAVs. Well, the unmanned combat air vehicles, the potential is virtually limitless. It's only limited by what kind of imagination we can apply to their capability. Early UCAVs, like the MQ-1 Predator, were used to great effect in Iraq and Afghanistan. But a successor to the MQ-1 was already in the works. Operational versions of the MQ-9 Reaper were first delivered to the Air Force in 2007. The Reapers have a single prop engine in the back that can carry them up to 1,000 miles from their launch site at speeds of 300 miles per hour. If nothing else, we know that one of the reasons people are intrigued in this technology is UCAVs, UAVs, they don't have mothers. So they are, in fact, not expendable, but able to mitigate risk. If you don't have to put a pilot into danger to accomplish a mission, that's good. You can afford to lose the platform, perhaps. Yeah, they're expensive. You don't want to lose it. But if they really have to go into a high-threat environment, a vicious air defense system, yeah, let the drones go in. For this reason, UCAVs will be an integral part of any future air campaign. The formation of MQ-9 Reapers trips the enemy's air defenses. Surface-to-air missile sites launch. A bevy of SA-23s race toward their targets at Mach 4. easily track and destroy most of the decoy formation. But with radars active, their positions are plotted by the F-35s. The lightnings snap into action. Aided by the same integrated avionics suite used in the F-22, they smoothly share targeting data. And overall, this ability to send messages between the cockpits can't be underestimated because when you look at your fourth generation fighters, you're in an F-16, you're always looking around you, where's my threat, where's my threat, and trying to build that picture all the time. Well, if you're in a joint strike fighter, you have the ability to instant message your images between each other. So all of a sudden, you're looking at the exact same threat and you both have the exact same concept of what kind of fight you're gonna be in. Two of the F-35s roll in to deliver AGM 88 harms against radar tracking stations. The harm, an anti-radiation missile, locks onto the station's radar signal and homes in for the kill. Two more F-35s fire on the SA-23 launch sites. Several other lightnings, filling the electronic countermeasure role, jam other targeting radar stations to prevent further launches. Another thing you can do with an ESA radar, and it's classified, is in essence fry the other guy's electronics. There's enough energy that you can focus with one of these radars that you can just cook his computer. Maybe you can knock out some of his radar system. The F-35s have met with spectacular success, clearing a corridor for bombers to travel straight into the target. A pair of B-2 Spirits, the venerable stealth bomber, now enter the corridor on a final run-in. The F-35s maintain the corridor, but suddenly a new threat appears on their cockpit displays. They know their role must change quickly. The enemy has scrambled two separate formations of MiG-35 fighters. One is headed for the target area, 